ಗಣಾಧಿಪತ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಐ ಗಾರ್ ಅಮ್ ಸೊ ಐಮ್ ಗೊನ್ನ ಯೂಸ್ ಅಮ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ ಟುಡೆ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅನನ್ಯ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಐ ನೋ ಐ ಡಿಡ್ ಅ ಹೋಲ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಅ ವೈಲ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ವಾಚ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಲಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ಬಟ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ನೈಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಯೂಶುವಲ್ ಐ ಗಾರ್ ಅಪ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಟು ಮೆಡಿಟೇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಸೋ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೋಬ ಮೈ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಬುಧಿಸ್ಟ್ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಟರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ had posted a question it's a very good question can i engage in bhakti if i don't believe in deities well <laughs> it depends on what kind of bhakti dwaita bhakti holds the view uh, the dwaita vada view that there are different worlds and in those different worlds where things are different from this world <laughs> there are beings called deities and these deities control various aspects of this world the world that we perceive and that by propitiating them in various ways we can get a uh, good fortune enjoyment wisdom and ultimately enlightenment Well, that's the Dwaita Vada view, <laughs> Bhakti. But then there's the Vishishta Dwaita view, the, the next higher level on the, of the Chatur Darshana. And Vishishta Dwaita means that the deities are real in the same sense that the world is real. in other words we perceive it it appears real to us but actually in the end it's not real in the end we become the supreme we become brahma or better to state it better we realize our oneness with brahma so in that case in that view the deities of bhakti are just an appearance or even better a symbol of some internal process within ourselves about how we create our reality and when we worship these deities what we're really doing is manipulating the chakras and uh causing different vibrations of energy which change the quality of our experience so this theory is based on the chakra system and of course to a, a strict advaitan the chakras are imaginary just like the body is imaginary and the world and all the phenomena that appear within it but to someone who is in dualistic consciousness it all seems very concrete so in the same way even though you may not believe i don't know really what that word means <laughs> it, it, to most people it seems to mean that they have some mental construct that they project onto the world and they value and interpret things in terms of that construct well <laughs> we want to go a step beyond that we want to say that just like if we investigate atomic reality we find there's a quantum world where the rules are different than in the macroscopic world the phenomena in the quantum world don't make sense according to our logic because our logic is based on gross things and the quantum world is more subtle well in a similar way the world of the chakras and the energy transformations in the chakras are like a quantum world of abstract energy exchanges huh and so this is very hard for us to model it's very hard for us to understand so the ananya bhakti system 
contains a whole analysis of the seven chakras, their energies, functions, and transformations. And it also contains the technology to manipulate them. Uh, just like now they're working on quantum computers. And good luck with that. That's going to be a tough one. But if they ever get it working, well, it'll be cool, I guess. But the ordinary technology, ordinary digital computer technology, can't do what quantum computers can do. And in the same way, our ordinary logic, uh, based on basically ones and zeros, true and false, right and wrong, up and down, in and out, black and white, <laughs> duality, cannot deal with the uh, strangeness and logical superimpositions of the world of the chakras. It's almost like we're seeing seven different worlds at the same time. And which one we choose to focus on becomes our primary reality. But the other ones are still there all the time. Now, most people focus on the lower three chakras. Huh? Sex, energy, and movement. And they base their whole reality on the, the vibrations of these lower three chakras. Now, I should also add that every chakra is like a brain. Normally, we think of our brain as residing in our heads. Huh? But how do you know what to eat? Isn't there a brain in your stomach that says, oh, I want this kind of food, or I want that kind of food? Huh? Or are you projecting from your intellect and saying, well, I have to take uh, so many calories today and it has to be a mixture of five different food groups. That's a good way to make yourself sick. If you follow the intuitive intelligence of the body, of the chakras, huh? you move when you feel like you want to move. You sit when you feel like you need to sit. You sleep when you're tired. You eat when you're hungry. You eat the foods that you crave and not what some abstract idea of a diet tells you to eat, hmm? and so on and so forth. You'll find yourself being a lot more healthy. You know, here I am at 72 years old, <laughs> perfect health. Why? I listen to my body. So this intelligence is maybe different from uh, symbolic intelligence of the mind-brain complex. But it's absolutely necessary for good quality of life. And then let's look at emotional intelligence, the heart chakra. Huh? And then there's intelligence of communication in the throat chakra. And then, yes, symbol manipulation in the Agnya chakra. And then there's ecstasy in the Sahasra, the thousand petal lotus chakra at the top of the head. So it depends on what quality of life you want. Uh, you want to live in a meat body? Then focus on the lower three chakras. You want to have a life of colorful emotions? Focus on the heart. Do you want to have good communication? Focus, or music for example? Focus on the throat. Uh, you want to be a big thinker and have big ideas? Focus on the forehead chakra. And if you want ecstasy, if you want to blow your mind, <laughs> go for the thousand petal lotus. Uh, so each of these chakras has a deity. And in the higher levels of bhakti, there's one deity that controls them all, and that's Ambal. Okay, Ambal means Devi, Shakti. There's Shiva and there's Shakti. So the Shiva is the source of all energy and will. But the Shakti is the energy itself. Try to understand. Like the light bulb here is the source of the light. But the light is different from the light bulb and at the same time is not different from the light bulb. Without the bulb, the light can't happen. See, it's the energy, it's the Shakti of the light bulb. So in the same way, Devi, Ambal, is the energy of Shiva. 
without which he appears inert. Okay, so when we move from Vishishtadvaita to Vivartavada, now Vivartavada is the platform for Raja Yoga, and Buddha's whole teaching fits very neatly in, in Raja Yoga. Okay, so one of the reasons why Buddhism has become so distorted and degenerate in recent times is that the people who are coming to Buddhism or Raja Yoga in uh, the Vedic system don't have the required qualifications. We see that in Tirvanamalai every year. Thousands of Westerners come to Tirvanamalai to do to meditate. <laughs> but do they have the Adhikar? Do they have the qualification to meditate on Brahman? No. We went over that qualification in the videos on the first sutra of Vedanta Sutra, where Shankaracharya, in his commentary, gives the adhikar for study of Vedanta, and it's very, very high. Basically, you have to be a perfect sannyasi. So, how many people who sit down to meditate or go to Buddhist retreats or become monks or become officially sannyasis actually have the adhikar of sannyas? Very, very, very few. Because you have to not only give up the gross indulgence in various sense enjoyment and comforts and so on, you also have to give up the subtle desire and attachment for it or against it. Huh? It's like some people take sannyas, some guys, <laughs> and become woman haters. Well, they're just as attached as somebody who is uh, enjoying sex life, but they're attached negatively. See? Negative attachment is just as much attachment as positive attachment. So <laughs> that has to be given up too. But who can do this? Almost no one. And that's why they can't really meditate. That's why they jump up and fall down. And I did a whole series on that too. So what, what is necessary is like a user interface on the Vishishtadvaita platform, which is a, a platform that allows duality, in fact, that embraces duality fully, in the form of bhakti yoga. But it's consciously and deliberately only a symbolic representation. The deities aren't real, you know, in the sense that you could walk up to them on the street and shake hands. No, they are metaphors for a process or an interaction or a type of intelligence or energy that is within the chakra system. And by performing different types of worship, huh, you get to manipulate that energy to increase your quality of consciousness, increase your quality of life. Huh? You can enjoy all kinds of ecstasies by these methods. Well, why not? You know, Just because you don't believe in somebody's abstract idea of what reality is? You know, that's, that's dualism. That's Dvaita Vada. Well, we don't really follow Dvaita Vada. That's for beginners. Uh, these series on this channel are for people who have been around the block and who know that that's bogus and leads nowhere. Uh, all it does is maybe allow you to uh, generate some punya, some good karma for the future. But if you already have good karma and you're already intelligent enough to uh, engage on a higher level, if you already know that the truth is Advaita, but you still uh, see the world and experience the world as real, then you need bhakti. Bhakti is where to start, not ordinary bhakti, ananya bhakti. Anya means different, other. Ananya means not other, similar to Advaita. Huh? So if you realize that the deities, including Shiva and Shakti, are really non-different from you, uh, Shiva Oham, Shiva Oham, uh, 
then you can use the bhakti process to manipulate your consciousness and your quality of life. If you want to live in heaven, you can be in heaven. Huh? Heaven is not someplace else up in the sky. Heaven is right here when you've cleaned your heart and your mind of all the ignorance and foolish thoughts and you see the reality as it is and you're not projecting any kind of idealistic theories or dualistic conceptions on it but you are just living with the full intelligence full energy and full realization of the truth in wonderful pastimes huh? then it's like why not live forever because we can be really happy and really enjoy this life and then go on and attain the highest realization om tat sat om harihi om